the station that is local for you. NBC4 at 6 starts now. Hundreds of student athletes and student patients sexually abused by an Ohio State University doctor in a culture of cover up. Thanks for joining us at 6. I'm Mark Taylor. I'm Colleen Marshall. The abuse went on for decades, shrouded in silence, with victims apparently too intimidated or too ashamed to report it. Tonight, only on NBC4, shocking new revelations about the number of people who were in a position to stop it but didn't. And the first red flag was raised less than a year after OSU hired Dr. Richard Strauss. I thought I was the only one because that's what they told me. Stephen so Snyder Hill was told one. that lie in 1995. So it's hard to believe that back in 1979, a student trainer first questioned why the new university doctor insisted on doing an aggressive groin exam on a wrestler who was being treated for cauliflower ear. This report details a field of red flags about Dr. Richard Strauss, who committed suicide in 2005. More than 300 men have now come forward, claiming they were groped, molested, even raped by Dr. Strauss. I question whether they were silent. I think some of them told who they thought that they could tell, their coaches, their teachers, or you know, the director of student health. Indeed, it is a shocking list of people who apparently heard about Strauss and did nothing. At least five team physicians, six assistant athletic directors, one athletic training director, four athletic trainers, 18 student trainers, four student health officials, 22 coaches, and two athletic directors, all identified in the so-called Perkins Coie report as people with knowledge. And the report concludes from Strauss's earliest involvement as a team physician at OSU, it was broadly known within the athletics department that Strauss showered alongside the male students, a practice the student athletes repeatedly complained about to their coaches. By 1994, so many young men on the fencing team complained to coach Charlotte Remenick about Dr. Strauss molesting them that she went to the medical director, who in turn wrote to the senior associate athletic director. The fencing coach complained specifically that Strauss was performing improper or unnecessary genital exams on her male student athletes, in addition to watching the student athletes while they showered. Still, no one stopped him. And more so than a year later, Stephen Snyder Hill was molested. And then told he was the only known victim. How does that make you feel? I mean, they, this doctor who was trying to get you would agree to shut up and go away was basically lying to you. That part is infuriating, but you have to think psychologically, when you put this stuff away 24 years ago, I thought I did everything that I could to protect people and to do the right thing. Snyder Hill, identified as student B, was assaulted by Dr. Strauss on January 5th, 1995. But the explosive report reveals student A complained about Strauss two days earlier, student C one day later. The university would not comment for this story because of the lawsuits filed by hundreds of men. But Dr. Michael Drake has made carefully worded public statements acknowledging university officials made mistakes back then. We at The Ohio State University are deeply sorry for Strauss's abuse decades ago. Their apology in it, I think, at least four or five times referenced the university from years ago really adamant to make sure that that language was in that apology to us. Strauss's family apologized to us. His wife, who he divorced in the 70s, and his son apologized and said they felt so regretted that, that, that we've gone through this. Not once did his wife say, hey, I divorced him, but that's not what Drake did. You know, so it's like, you just think that, I just wish that Ohio State University and the president of the university had the integrity of Strauss's ex-wife. But it is difficult to argue that the current OSU administration inherited this nightmare. The university itself launched the investigation, paid the $6 million price tag for the Perkins report, and is offering counseling for free to the victims. No one in university leadership now was at Ohio State during the two decades Dr. Strauss was abusing students. 
Because of the statute of limitations, the university likely has no legal obligation to respond at all. But OSU has said it is committed to a financial settlement. How that will happen and how the fallout from the culture of cover-up is also now coloring the career of Congressman Jim Jordan will be the focus of our report tonight at 11. Certainly some explosive information we learned there in that in that report. And each day more more information mm -hmm. is trickling in. Today there was a post uh, on my Facebook page from a swimmer who says he was raped by Dr. Strauss and he is one of the people involved in this lawsuit. So information will continue to come out and it's incredible how long it went on. And we're going to learn more tonight on NBC4 at 11. 11. Yeah. Right, Colleen, thank you.